so thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, so what you were talking about, I'm going to talk to you about ECMAScript. Um, specifically ECMAScript 6. Well, actually 2015, but I'll get back to that later. So let's start about this. What is ECMAScript actually? Well, ECMAScript is a specification that was uh, designed by ECMA. It, the specification number is ECMA 262. Not very interesting the number, but ECMA also has a lot of other specifications like 402, that's the Dart programming language, or something more obscure things like adaptive lossless data compression algorithm, no idea what it is, or even measurements of airborne noise emitted by information technology and telecommunication equipment. So if you want to learn about that, they have the 16th version of that already, so I don't know why they need so many versions about it, but it's ECMAScript 262, uh, the, to be specifically the ECMAScript 2015 language specification. So what uses ECMAScript? Well, first of all, actions. ActionScript uses ActionScript. Uh, ActionScript, as you know, probably know or maybe not, is was used by Flash and some other uh, implementations as well. Uh, TypeScript, um, the failed Microsoft version, I think, of, of JavaScript. Uh, JScript, another failed version from Microsoft. <laughs> Can't keep going on like this, right? JScript.net, <laughs> another failed version of JavaScript. And of course, JavaScript itself. Um, a quick question about it, and Aryan cannot answer this one. Uh, do you, does anybody know what uh, JavaScript was called before it was JavaScript? It's going to be a little audience participation in this talk, so. No, no, nothing. You can, you, you can win everything that's on there, and we have an about a tray full of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Ion? Yes, live scripts. And there was another one, do you know that as well? I think it was called Mocha, but I don't, don't know for sure. But we're going to be talking about JavaScript, and of course not Java, as some recruiters sometimes think it is. So, ECMAScript 2015, or 2006, it's uh, the latest version of ECMAScript. So 5.1 was the one before that. And ECMAScript 5.1, that brought us a, a couple of new features, like strict mode, that gave you more errors. That was actually the feature of strict mode. <laughs> uh, it introduced JSON, a, a good way to uh, organize data, uh, and a couple of other new features, like uh, trailing commas in, uh, in objects, and things like that. So. Back to this, ECMAScript 2015, or six. Okay, there are, two, there are actually three names. I can't remember the third one, but uh, I think it was ECMAScript Harmony. Um, they kind of switched around with names. And the six is a version number, 2015 is also a version number. I don't know why and when to use what, so that from now on I'm going to be using six because it's shorter to pronounce. So what brought ECMAScript 6? And uh, that's a, that's a, a lot. Um, I'm going to be talking about some of it. Uh, not everything. Um, but ECMAScript 6 brought arrow functions, which I'm going to explain later. It brought classes, um, different kinds of maps, more things like new math objects, uh, promises, uh, new Unicode uh, support. And I'm going to be talking about this list. Um, I will go through it once, one by one. And if you have any questions when I'm talking about it, please just raise your hand or speak up. So, first of all, I'm going to be say a little bit about template strings. Um, back when we well, in ECMAScript 5.1, uh, you have strings like this. Uh, if you want an, oh, I see I did it in Dutch, sorry about that. But if you uh, uh, had 
want to do a backslash n in it, you had to escape it because uh, otherwise you get a new line instead of uh, the string backslash n. Um, if you actually put an enter in, in it, you uh, get an error because you can't put new lines within a, a comment, uh, within a, a, a string. And if you want to add variables to a string, you have to uh, concatenate it with plus and things like that. So in uh, ECMAScript 6, they have a new way to do that, and that's called uh, template strings. Instead of a normal quote, you get a backtick, and then it actually just prints out the exact string that you uh, want to give. So backslash n is already escaped, and enter is going to is going to become a new line, and they also have uh, a way to add variables with a dollar sign and brackets, so you don't have to uh, concatenate the string with pluses. It's a lot cleaner code, but as you can see, my code styling doesn't my code hinting doesn't actually understand what I'm trying to do here. I'll have the problem a bit more in the presentation as well, but. Um, so this, this actually helps clean up code. It's helped you write faster code and it helps you write more readable code. Uh, does anybody have a question about this? So let me continue to let and constants. Um, let is actually the new var. So if you want to create a variable in ECMAScript 6, most of the time you're going to be using let. Not always, I see. Uh, some people grinning about it, but so um, another small pop quiz. Say you have a variable foo which has one, two, three. You have an if statement that just says true, as you, al you always go through that if statement, and then you say var foo four, five, six. Does anybody know what this is going to lock? Four, five, six, and the one below that. No, four, five, six. <laughs> and <laughs> in, in JavaScript, you have uh, a block scoping, and a if statement is not a block in that. It's a function is a block, and uh, an if statement is just inside it. Or with uh, with lets, you get something new. Uh, this one does what you said. This one says four, five, six, and this one says one, two, three, because the if statement is now uh, uh, a stricter block. I don't know what it's called again, but um, so with lets you can actually do it within inside brackets. You create a new variable within the if statement, and it only exists within that if statement or within a for loop or something like that. Yeah. Then you just override that let. So this one, this is going to generate an error. Um, in uh, with fars, you can just override it with if you could do the do two times far foo, it's okay. With let, it says that the foo already exists. You can't get another foo, of course. Uh, yeah, and then you also have constants. There's also new constants. Is uh, you assign it once, and you can never reassign it. So this one, this will also generate an error because it's constantly the one, two, three. Any questions about this? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Even if you don't do the if statement and just do curly braces, it's also a new scope. So, um, that's something a bit uh, harder to grasp, uh, destructuring. It's uh, about arrays and objects and how to assign that to variables in a different kind of way. Um, so let's say you have an array. In that array it's are three values, value one, two, and three. If you want to assign those three values to different kinds of variables, in ECMAScript 5.1, you have to do it like this. So if you want, uh, the first one, the array zero, this uh, first one goes to far A, and the other in B, and then the last one in C. Um, with array destructuring, you can do it like this. Uh, also notice that I'm using let over here, I'm just updating everything. Um, 
this actually says, uh, put the first one in A, the second one in B, and the third one in C. If you omit the C, it only uh, assign the one to A and the two to B, and nothing is being done with the third variable. No, this will, will work. You can even skip one. Uh, if you do it like this, then one will be assigned to the A and three will be assigned to B. So let's get an example with objects. So they're basically the same thing with, with variables. If you, uh, with uh, arrays, if you want to do, uh, assign the, f the, the foo to A and the bar to B, you have to do it like this. You have to uh, specifically say object of foo is A and object of bar is B. Um, this can now be done like this. Uh, it's a bit strange how this works because you now say uh, foo is going to be in A and bar is going to be in B, not the other way around. Um, so if, if you try to do this and it works the other way around, just switch it. I had a few problems with that. <laughs> um, if you actually want to assign it to the variables foo and bar, not the variables A and B, you can do it faster and you can just do this. So now you have the one will be in foo and the two will be in bar. So you say, well, what's the use of that? Well, I have a small example. <laughs> so let's say you have a function and you want to, uh, uh, and, and you have a function and an object. The function gives a first name and a, and a surname and it uh, locks my name. It locks the first name and surname together. And I have an object, and this object is a first name and a surname. Maybe you get that through Ajax or another JSON thing, or you just pull it out somewhere. You can just put the object inside the function, and then because you have these curly braces in, inside of it, it will create a new uh, two variables. And then you can log it with the template string, as I mentioned before. Um, this is handy if you have a lot of JSON files, and it's it's it makes your code cleaner as well. Which brings me to the next thing, default rest and spread parameters. Um, am I going too fast or no? Okay, thank you. So let's say you have a multiply function. With this multiply function, you normally uh, multiply it by two, but you can uh, add a second uh, argument, which is by what value you want to multiply it. So in this case, if you call the multiply function three, it will return six because three times two is six. But if you want to uh, multiply it by three, you can do three times three. Well, how do you want to do that in the old JavaScript? Well, like this. Um, so we have the multiply function with x and y. Um, you have to see if y is undefined. And if so, assign two to the value y and then return x times y. It's uh, it's ugly code for something so you think that's so simple. Well, it is. So you can. Yeah. Yeah. So the if you do y, then it will be the the. Um, the value. Yeah. It it will be undefined as a primitive. So without the quotes, if you do type off, you get a quote version. A quoted. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. um, so if you want to do that in ActMath script 6, you can just assign a default value to y. So the default value of 2, you just return x times y, and you get the same results. Uh, a lot cleaner and a lot easier to read. <laughs> I th at least in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, so another thing. What if you have a add all function, which basically adds all the parameters you, uh, you pass to it all together. So if you do three, four, six, it will be 13. If you do 21 and 21, it will be 42. So that's, if you want to do that in, uh, in ECMAScript 5.1, I have a bit of a strange version of it. You have to do something like this. Um, you have to make a real array out of the arguments array because uh, it can give some difficulties if you if you treat it like a real array. So, and to 
make it a real array, you have to do array dot prototype dot slice dot call. It's I always forget that. Um, so I have to do something like this, and so you have all the numbers in it uh, as an array, and then uh, you just add everything together with a for loop. It's one possibility, one way to do it. In um, ECMAScript six, you have a uh, rest parameter, which is three dots and then a variable, which actually says everything that you put in here is going to be an array inside the, n the number uh, variable. If you don't put anything in it, it will be an empty array. Uh, you can also add something in front of it. So let's, let's say you want a variable x, and everything else that is being put in is going to be in the numbers variable. You can just add a, a, a the extra parameter to it. So also cleaner code, and this might this the three dots that might be difficult. Uh, might be strange if you see it for the first time, but. Uh, if it's being used more, it will be uh, good. And there's also a different thing called the spread, which is actually the same thing, but other way around. Say you have a array of three variables, of three uh, values, one, two, and three, but you want to split it into three variables. You can do a uh, you can do a uh, spread, and then it will be turned into the three variables x, y, and z over here. So far, I haven't found a use case for it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have one, please let me know. Oh, no, I might have one. It's yeah? used a lot in languages like Python for all kinds of stuff. OK. You get an array or a bunch of numbers from somewhere, or you want to have a function you'd like to add all, to add all. <laughs> um, something along those lines. We used to use it for um, indexing systems. We could input one to, I think I represent million fields, but it would, wouldn't have to be a data field. It just had a parameter that would turn out to be an array if you put more stuff in it. Yeah, well, that's the, the, the uh, that's uh, yeah, all, this one, yeah. There. I I know this, this one has a lot of, uh, uh, good implementations, but the other way around, this I, I can't, I, I haven't thought of anything. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know why it's weird? Because it's from PHP. <laughs> 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 so, well, let's continue. Um, arrow functions, or uh, in a lot of other, other languages called lambda expressions. Um, so, the above thing. This timeout, say you want to log every second that one second has passed, you have a function within it. Um, one thing of arrow functions, which you can write like this, is uh, you, you have a smaller code. It's, a, it's You actually say, I have no arguments, and uh, then log this. It's a shorter way to write functions. That's uh, the most basic thing that you can do with arrow functions. But I'll introduce something else. Um, say, again, you have a, let's see, yeah, you have a uh, function called person, and uh, every second you want to increase its age by one. Um, you can do this in an in interval, and, but you have to assign this to a variable because you want to increase it every time. You may new scope because the function is always a new scope. Um, well, with arrow functions, you uh, inherit the scope. And you inherit the this as well. So, the uh, so you can do it like this. The, the, the this stays the same as up here, so you don't have to assign a new uh, variable to it. Um, it's very handy when you use uh, a lot of event handlers where you constantly need to go to the, 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 the parent function or the parent scope. Um, so another thing, um, it also, uh, if you do this, it also returns the, uh, the, uh, the value of the age, so you can assign it to a new variable. So let's say you have a, uh, what do I want to say with this? 
Oh, right. Uh, let's say you have an add function. And uh, plus symbol, it adds a plus b. You can do it like this. In uh, with lambda expression, you can do it faster. You can just say these are the expressions. Where is my cursor? Here. These are the expressions. And I want to do uh, a plus b. And then directly add it to the to a variable. So the function, this this is now a, a function in the add. Well, it's a bit strange, but um, there are more use cases where you pr can probably see where it will be handy. But uh, just want to show that this is possible as well. Um, yeah, yeah, the constant, in, indeed, yeah. Unless you wanted to change it again, <laughs> for some strange reason. Okay, so um, after this, I want to say some very short thing. Just uh, get catch up my breath a bit, and I wanted to get a bit of water here, but I've got. But that's okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so. Something short, uh, binary and octal literals is new. Um, there's, there were hexadecimal literals with a X in between, so like uh, OX to A, and you have the hexadecimal version to A is 42. Um, but you can also do the binary version with a B or an octal version with an O. So also use cases, I don't see them a lot. Octal versions, I've seen that because in a node where you have a uh, um, a file system where you want to add the uh, what's it called the securities if you have let's say three 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 or something like that that's always octal uh, I don't know that's it's the only thing I, I've seen for use cases I think binary has more use cases but just something short between you don't have to remember it. <laughs> So now up to some more uh, bigger things like classes. So classes is something that uh, uh, is wanted by uh, a part of the JavaScript community for a very long time. Um, it's mostly the JavaScript community that comes from a backend world <laughs> that wants to see classes for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what are classes? Well. Oh. My thing doesn't update. So let's say you have a, uh, a function called person with a first name and a last name, and uh, you want to be able to get a full name, which is uh, this thing, and you want to lock the name. Well, this is a bit how you could do it uh, without classes in classic JavaScript. Um, so uh, in this case, it would lock the name. Well. With classes, you can do it um, more clean. So you have the class person, and you have a constructor which sets the uh, which always uh, runs on in, uh, uh, when you do a uh, new person. So it sets the first name and last name variables. Um, you can use the getter with get full name, which also works in 5.1, but it's now yeah. Well, I never used it in 5.1 before, but you can get the full name like this, and uh, you can also overwrite the uh, the primitive things like to string, and you can say, in this case, hi, my name is, and then with the string literal, this dot full name, and this dot full name because it's together, it returns this, and then you can do uh, the new person and just do p dot to string and then you can get hi my name is Miriam Tocini <laughs> not my name but so that's that's pretty cool it's 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 cleaner it's a more uh, uh, defined way of writing classes and it also has a lot of extra functions you can also extend the cl these classes um, like this say so you have the same class that we had before but you want a employee version of it. So uh, you want to add a company to the same string you had before. Well, you can just say class employee extends person, which then inherits everything from the person. 
well, we wanted to add the company, so we need a new constructor where the company is also present. Now, then we use super to say the super is like the parent uh, version of this. So you say get the uh, call the constructor from the person for the first name and the last name, and then just add the company. And then we also want to change the to string, not the, the the full name getter because that stays the same. But we want to change the to string, and it will. I want to say exactly the same thing, so I can say. Uh, super dot two string, but I also want to add, and I work at this dot company. So now you have a person that you can just call with a first name and last name, but you can also have an employee right now with uh, a first name, a last name, and a company in it. So if I say new employee and I do two string, it will say, "Hi, my name my name is Miriam Tocini, and I work at Springest." Any questions for this? Okay. Is it clear or? No? Okay. So let's move on to the uh, a bit more difficult things that I don't really understand for every, uh, everything about it. So if it's a bit unclear to you, then it's probably because it's a bit unclear to me as well. <laughs> so iterators. Uh, iterators are a way to. Uh, um, a new sort of way to loop through objects. Um, you can do that through uh, arrays, but also uh, through strings. Um, in this case, I have a uh, variable called uh, foo, which has the string high, uh, and I create, a, I get its iterator. Its iterator how is the one where you can uh, use a next for, uh, function on it to uh, step through. In this case, the string. Now, if you do if you do foo iterator dot next for the first time, you get a value of the first letter. It's called h, and then it says that it's not done yet with looping. Uh, the, the second time it's the y, it's also not done yet, and the third time it's uh, just says done. And every next time you do it, it also says it says done. You can also do that with an array, and then the first time it will say hi, and the second time it will say there, and then the third time it will also say it's done. You can also create your own types of iterators. Say, let's say we have an ID maker. Each time we want to do next, we want to get a new ID. Um, so we return the next function, and every time we uh, increase the index by one. Uh, and we all always say that it's not done because it's an endless iteration. So in this case, we can do id dot next dot value. Uh, each time it adds one. Um, so you can also also do a special kind of iterator. Uh, it's called the symbol iterator. I, uh, the symbol is the one thing that I'm not clear about. I know what a symbol does for itself. It's all it's a it's a unique value. You can it's always a unique value, but I don't know what the iterator is about within it. So, sorry about that. But let's say you want a, a Fibonacci. So every time you uh, do a, uh, uh, every time you loop through it, in this case for an iterator, it's a for off loop, um, you can get the next Fibonacci number. So in this case, we have a, a previous and a current, and then we calculate the next number and we return done is false and the value. So then we loop through it with uh, with a for off loop, in this case for for n of Fibonacci, and then m you must remember to break in ca these cases because otherwise you have an, an endless loop. So I break when it's larger than seven and I console lock it. So I get one, two, three, five in this case. Um, so this is a bit strange a bit awkward but I'm um, I'm getting to somewhere so I'm getting to generators right now um, generators is uh, a, again a different way to well now generators is something different the generator is a new kind of function that you can uh, call each time and each time it steps further through the function you can create it like this function star is ID maker in this case and each time you uh, 
call the uh, next function for the, uh, it, it will um, run the code all the way through the next yield. So in this case, it will yield zero, that's what you see here. And then it will, uh, the next time it will start at the next uh, line. In this case, it will yield one, and then it will yield two. And then it can go any further, so it will always just say that it's done. So let's go back to that ID maker we had. Um, we can also write a generator for that, which will be a bit cleaner. So we have the ID maker, and we'll ju we just say, well, it's true, yield the next index. So ev every time you say next, it will just do yield index plus, plus one. Uh, plus. So the first time it will say, OK, we create one, we go in a while loop, yield index, OK, we go out of it. The next time it says, OK, we're we'll still in the while loop, just do the next index. And it continues like that all the way through. And you can also have a generator within a generator. <laughs> oh, very fun. Well, I don't know. Maybe sometimes in the future you can use it for something. Um, so let's say uh, we have a generator that yields. Uh, first time it yields Y, and then it goes inside the another generator. With a star, you just say loop until it's it's uh, it returns a done. So the first time you call the next, it will yield. Uh, y, uh, I, and it will uh, do 10. And then the next time you say next, it goes to this one, which says that it go has to go to this one, and then it will return 11, and then 12, then 13, and then it knows, okay, I'm done, and then it will return 20. And the next time you run it, it will return done. <coughs> um, I, I think it takes a while before we get to see things like this in a lot of projects, but once we get used to it, and once we know how to use it for uh, our projects, it, we will probably see it a lot more. But I, I think one of the use cases is asynchronous uh, functions. Yes, yeah. That's why we use it for memory. Yeah. So but I think it's it's going to take a while before everybody gets used to this in the, in the JavaScript uh, uh, community. Another one, and the next thing we have is promises, and this is this is one that's, that I already use a lot. Um, it's also supported in a couple of browsers already. So let's say you have this. Let's say um, you want to get a page, and uh, if you have that page, you want to replace uh, the page with the body with what you got from the HTML. And if it fails, you want to say that you're an idiot. Um, well, in this case, you can you, you have the get page function. You have the well, in this case, the jQuery get thing because I wanted to write it shorter. Um, then you say if it's done, replace the page, and then it fails. Lock this. It's easy. It's clean. But well, what if you um, j not only want to append the page, but also have an option to I will not only replace page, but also have an option to append it to the page you already have. Well, then you have to get a callback. Um, so we have to say uh, uh, get get page and then uh, uh, use the callback that you have here, replace or append, and then so that it can do either one of that. Okay. It's still pretty clean. It's going to get a bit more cluttered right now. Um, but, well, I'm not always an idiot, so I just want to say sometimes that it's not my fault. So you also have a lock kind fill, or maybe. Um, okay, it's getting a bit more cluttered right now. So you say the get page, replace page, lock kind fill. If you look like, if you see that for the first time, if you open a project, you don't really understand what a get page is going to do. So, but I promise we can uh, solve these kind of things. Um, yeah, so that's it's it's a bit more code, but uh, the the one at the bottom when you call it, it's going to be a bit more uh, easier to to uh, understand. So you call the get page, and if it's done, you just say then replace page. If it's filled, you just catch lock kind fill. Well, how does this work? You have the new promise with a resolve and reject. These are uh, built in f with a promise. If it succeeds. You just call the resolve with a 
response text, and it fails, you just say reject. Now, if the resolve uh, works, then it goes to the then, and if the reject is called, it will go to the catch. Well, this is something you can do with uh, promises. It's, it has a lot more functionalities within it. It's just a, a very simple, well, the most simple thing I could think of. But you can use it with a lot of AJAX, asynchronous uh, things, so you don't have to wait or don't have to write strange things inside of it. You can also chain the, the thens. You can say get page, then replace page, then do this, then do that, and then the catch at the end. Um, I think we're we're almost at the end now. So <laughs> we just have two more things. Um, first of all, is comprehensions. Uh, I don't know why it's called comprehensions. I don't comprehend everything about it, but. Uh, so let's say you have a uh, list of customers, an object, an array with objects in it, and uh, you actually only want to, to get the, uh, the customers inside of Seattle. So you can loop uh, through the customers with a for off loop. So you can say for C of customers, uh, if the city is in Seattle, then I want his last name. And then we add it into an array that goes into the variable results. So if you lock the results, it will say Brubaker and Larson that uh, live in Seattle. So that's one thing you can do with it. Um, but uh, what if you d want not only the, the last name, you want to have the last name in the variable name and you also want the city, well, you can also add the object. And like the same way as we did before with the, uh, uh, with the structuring, you can as, uh, assign it to a name as fast uh, as well with, with this. So in this case, you have uh, an, an array with objects in it. Um, we also have, you can also do it as a generator. Um, the main thing that changed in this is that the square brackets changed into normal braces, and then you have a generator, so you can uh, do it with you can call it with next each time. So in this time, this this case, the first time it will be uh, Brubaker, and if you call the next, the second time it will be uh, Larson, and the third time will be just through. Uh, yeah, the done will be through. So that's that's. Um, it, that's the things I want to tell you about. Um, but some of you probably be thinking, well, when can I use it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use it in a project. Uh, I use it in a project that's live right now. Every, not everything, but most of the things that are uh, what, what, what I touched today. Um, and I use Babel for that. Uh, which with Babel, um, you can uh, it's called a transpiler, which means that you can s change one code language into another code language, and Babel does, uh, it's, it transpiles ES6 into ECMAScript 5.1. And you can use something like grunt with it, and uh, will create, uh, and, and it will work uh, from, I think, IE8 if you also use uh, polyfills with it. So it's actually pretty fast, and it's, it works like a charm, as, as far as I uh, use it, and uh, I use the, the, the constants and the lets, I use the array destructuring, I use the uh, uh, classes a lot, and it, it's, it's very clean code, and it's still a uh, very decent uh, uh, JavaScript, but what, what's being generated. Um, there are also others like Tracer, but I like Babel more because the the code that it generates is closer to what you actually want to write. So what does it generate? Well, let's say you have this uh, smaller version of a generator, and now I'm having, giving you an example that's that's going to create some ugly code. Um, let's say you have this generator, and you want to if you transpile it, it will become this. Uh, <laughs> It will start with the use strict because ECMAScript 6 is always strict, so 
a lot of errors. Well, not in this case because we just wrote, written something very small. Um, but it's it's fast and it works really good. It's uh, um, I don't know what it does exactly like here, but it's it's still it's very fast code and I ha I didn't have any problems so far with it. Um, if you want to know more about ES6, uh, maybe you can, if you read it, you can teach me some things as well. <laughs> so um, you can go to exploringjs.com. Uh, it's a book that, ha that came out about a week ago, I think, from Axel Rauschmeier. Uh, it's it's free online. You can also buy an ebook from it, but uh, it, it it's it's ac actually everything about uh, ECMAScript 6. So, I will wait. <laughs> so, that's my talk, and thank you for coming to my meetup group. Um, we have some things uh, that we're, go that we're working on. We're going to have a meetup in Groningen at, NL, uh, at HTML5 test, so you can uh, get all uh, you can see all his devices and listen to talks about strange browsers. Um, there's also going to be one in the eastern part of the Netherlands, probably, but we're also going to be doing a hackathon in the future, uh, and that's going to be right here in Amsterdam. So, well, if you, we'll keep you posted. We keep you updated about everything. So, thank you very much for joining tonight. Thank you.